चूड़ा ना देंगे इश्यू चूड़ा नहीं प्लीज लग रही है तो इंद्रो ना मत करो ना देखे ना आंधा अरे पंपिस तो ना आगो इकड़े दी इसे डाउनलोड चेस ना देख कर अब इकड़ा आड़े रावत दे देख कर ना देख कर ना ये बम कुछ नहीं दे अलग आता प्लान जैसा इनको टाइप आई दी आड़े और सेटिंग करने जा रहा हूँ चला आठ सौ पंपिस तो नहीं को I don't know 
Good afternoon to all of you. I'm Somdatta Karak and I lead Science Communication and Public Outreach at the CSIR Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology, CCMB. I welcome you all here for the launch of our mobile science exhibition called the Gene Health Connect on the occasion of World Thalassemia Day today. This exhibition is co-developed by CCMB and Vishweshwaraya Industrial and Technological Museum under the National, of science, National Council of Science Museums, Ministry of Culture. And this is developed as a part of Jigyasa project under CSIR's flagship outreach program, which is focused on students and teachers. This collaboration was enabled by the MOU between CSIR Jigyasa and NCSM. Through this exhibition, we want to reach out to young people, starting with people of Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. Most people now hear about genes, but do not yet fully understand how genes and health are interconnected with each other. It is important given that India has a high genetic disease burden, which can be reduced if we are better informed. That is what exactly this exhibition aims to do, and in the process, we are collaborating with our venue partners, such as Telangana Social Welfare, Residential Educational Society, uh, Residential Educational Institution Society, who have been kind enough to coordinate with their colleges across all districts of Telangana to host our exhibition on their campuses and connect with nearby educational organizations. Similarly, we are also reaching out to medical and pharmacy colleges. Together, we aim to create an informed mass of young people who will want to advocate for better and more evidence-based healthcare measures. Towards this cause, we are privileged to be joined online by Dr. N. Kalai Selvi, Director General CSIR, as our guest of honor. Also joining us in person are Dr. Vinay Nandikuri, Director CSIR CCMB, and our collaborator, Ms. K. Sadna, Director VITM, Dr. Geeta Vani Rayasam, Head CSIR Human Resource Development Group, and also the Head of CSIR Jigyasa Program. Dr. Srinivas Reddy, Director, CSR, Indian Institute of Chemical Technology, whose auditorium we are using today. Dr. Prakash Kumar, uh, Director of CSR National Geog Geophysical Research, Center, uh, Research Institute. I would invite all of you on stage, please. I would like our director, Dr. Vinay Nandikuri, to felicitate all our guests today. Thank you very much. I would now like to invite upon Bharat Atte, my colleague in the CSR Jigyasa program at CCMB, to come over and take over the program today as the compare. Thank you. Genetically, all of us 
are 99.9 percent identical. Just 0.1 percent <laughs> genetic variation makes us who you are. Different, unique, and special. I welcome you all for this special event. I am Bharat Atte. I work with Dr. Somdatta in Science Communications and Public Outreach. I also work on the Jigyasa Initiatives, which is a dream and a vision of New India by Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji. And the dream is to extend the classroom learning by focusing on well-planned research laboratory-based learning for school students. I'm sure you all want to see the exhibition waiting outside for you all. But before that, we would like to tell you a little bit about why and how we have built this exhibition for young people as all of you. Without further ado, I would like to invite upon our director, Dr. Vinay Nandikuri, director of CCMB, to tell a little bit about CCMB and on why the CCMB, why CCMB has gone about developing the Gene Health Connect exhibition. Thank you. <coughs> it's a privilege that we have today with us Sadhana Ji, Gita Vani, Srinivas, and Prakash, and all of you in the audience. So what I would do is I'll give you a brief overview of CCMB, not too much, and I would like to talk a bit about why this exhibition is relevant to what, I mean, why it is important. What I, when I, like, over the last two years, many times I had an opportunity to meet students who are in the 8th, 9th, and 10th. They come part of many programs to uh, CCMB. When you interact with them, you realize their curiosity is immense. And this exhibition, in principle, is basically... Uh, this exhibition's basic purpose is actually to take care of some of those curiosities, but in a very pointed way. This is from the genetic makeup and with respect to hereditary and how diseases happen and stuff like that. So this kind of an exhibition can be extended to many other things, including chemistry and geophysics. I mean, I'm sure those things will happen by and by. And all of it, the, uh, the support for this has come from Gignasa's uh, money that is given by the CSR Gignasa network. And that is completely headed by... Uh, <laughs> so it's, it's headed by Gita Vani here. So you put it? Yeah, thanks. I didn't realize <laughs> it's a <our> presentation. <laughs> so uh, CCMB is kind of the youngest among the three institutes here. IACT is kind of the host for us. And uh, it started in 1977 within IACT. And it was at that time IACT was called RRL. And our own campus, which is next door, again, came out of IACT land, was uh, inaugurated in 1987, 26th November. And it was all the work for the CCMB for founders is basically in a found, CCMB was done by our founder, Dr. Pushmamitra, Bar, uh, Pushmamitra Bhargava. And uh, he is basically built an amazing campus out there and a vision which is something which is unparalleled. Even today's time, we I look back and see how, what kind of a visionary he is, like, you know, the kind of institute he has built. We have three campuses, one which is right next door, uh, is around uh, where we have many of these things that happen, structural biology to crop technology, and then we have another campus where ecology, wildlife conservation, and uh, wildlife forensics happen. This is called LACONS, and then we have an innovation hub where we have uh, diagnostics for the wildlife as, as far as the, the human diagnostics also happen there, and there is an 
incubation center for the companies. Um, CCMB is one of those leading biological institutes in India with the facilities that are almost unparalleled. And it has all the facilities that are necessary for performing high, I mean, uh, high quality biological research. You can buy informatic facility all the way up to cryo -EM facility. So we, over the last 30 years now, have performed, in addition to this, work on various societally important problems like See, DNA fingerprinting originally started off in CCMB, which ultimately went on to become an institute called CDFD, which is where all the fingerprinting happens today. We are also involved, we are involved in Samba Masuri, uh, which used to, like, you know, improve Samba Masuri rice, which is essentially used to get blight problems and uh, they we generally ended up coming up with a improved Samba Masuri which is resistant to blight and has much lower glycemic index. We did a lot of work during COVID and uh, in, we were also involved in the introduction of the mouse deer and wildlife diagnostics. All these things and most recently sickle cell anemia. We have screened almost 28 lakh population for sickle cell anemia. That is a very brief thing about CCMB before I want to get into what is the basic purpose of such kind of exhibitions. We all know how our cells look, right? We have many compartments, many things that are part of a cell. And we all know also something called central dogma where a DNA gets converted to our genetic material gets converted to RNA and which in turn gets converted to protein. So the exhibition actually has certain um, certain uh, you know certain places where these processes have actually been clearly uh, explained using uh, exhibits that are there in that right a good example of this is a sickle cell anemia a genetic disease it's basically what happens is in most cases dna to rna rna to protein is quite all right but sometimes you know a while ago we were talking about it 99.9% .9 of our genome is similar that 1% if that 1% in one base change is at times sufficient to make a major impact or major change in the way we end up I mean, like we end up getting diseases. One such disease that I can easily talk about it, which most probably most of you people identify, is sickle cell anemia. And the reason I'm taking it is one of the simplest examples to give. So in sickle cell anemia, what happens is in one of our chromosomes, one base, only one base changes from a A to a T. The resulting change happens in the protein where a glutamine is converted to valine. And what happens because of that is that and it happens in a gene of beta globin. So hemoglobin, which is present in our blood and is a carrier of oxygen, has two alpha and two beta chains. So when normal hemoglobin, it's pretty much this shaped and it, it moves very smoothly through the blood vessels. But when you have a sickled hemoglobin, you end up getting at lower oxygen concentration and certain kind of things, the red blood cell becomes this. Essentially kind of aggregating and not allowing the blood flow to happen properly, giving you severe pain and if it is not treated, it can be fatal. So. Normally, why did uh, nature evolve such kind of a thing? The interesting part is sickle uh, beta globin, which has mutation in that, is resistant to malaria. That may have been the reason at some point of time for evolution of this mutation. However, in today's world, it can be problematic. So how do you avoid such kind of a disease is a simple thing. You have either heterozygous or a homozygous. All of us, you know that we have pairs of chromosomes. So. If you have heterozygous, one of the chromosomes has the mutation, the other one is wild type. If two heterozygous end up marrying, you have a 25% chance that one of the children is basically going to be homozygous and hence they will have sickle cell anemia. So these kind of things can be easily avoided if we actually screen larger population. CCMB was actually involved in that. Dr. Chandak sitting among the audience here is actually involved in such an effort and along with many others, he. Uh, he spearheaded this effort to screen 28 lakh uh, people uh, in uh, many parts of India, Madhya Pradesh and uh, uh, Jharkhand and other parts of India, out of which 11,000 ended up being sickle cell anemia patients. What I am trying to use this as a point to say that these kind of genetic diseases where single mutation 
can cause a major effect are kind of important for us to know. If we know, there can be ways to mitigate such kind of problems. So, for example, advise people who are heterozygous that, you know, they should be careful, I mean, maybe avoid that marriage. If it is not possible, later on screen so that the children are not homozygous. There may be other ways to do things. But point here is, this is an important aspect and the whole exhibition is basically about educating people for the uh, towards uh, these aspects rare genetic diseases not limited to hemo uh, sickle cell anemia there are many more and you can see the number of rare genetic diseases that are known where mutations are uh, mutations in our genome have been mapped to some part of this you can see that approximately 7 crore indians have this so among many Seven core Indians is a pretty big number, and then you will have some kind of a, a rare genetic disease or other. So, our idea is to uh, find out, like which we are all involved in, to find out what mutations are responsible for such diseases. That's a work that is ongoing, not only in CCMB, in many parts of the world. And this is an ongoing work that keeps on going, uh, this, this keeps on uh, happening. What is thing is that India is a place we have now world's highest population, 1,400 1, million slash 140 1 crores, right? So this one has, we have well-defined population, tribes, and many other things that are available only in India. So we should be using modern technologies to find out what are the genetic causes for many of the diseases which are happening, uh, rare genetic diseases that are happening, which is, not, if it is not unknown, if it is known, we should use our genetics to find out how to uh, mitigate these issues. With this, I'll stop. Thank you. As Dr. Vinay Nandaguri has mentioned, uh, CCMB might be the youngest, but I assure it's the coolest uh, with leading biological institute, I mean, the facilities over here, right? So um, next we'll go to uh, everything you breathe, see, ingest, or touch is made up of chemicals. As Dr. Uh, Srinivas Reddy says, uh, you can see chemistry in everything. Let's now hear about the other CSR labs which is on the same road. Um, so let's start with CSR IACT. I would like to invite upon Dr. Srinivas Reddy Garu, uh, Director of IACT, to tell us about their institute and the Jigyasa initiatives in their institute. Can you check, is Madam Jain? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. Madam Sadhana Ji, Director of uh, VITM Bangalore, my fellow directors of CCMB and NGRA, Dr. Vinay and Dr. Prakash, and Dr. Geeta Vani Rayasam, she is head of uh, CSIR HRDG. I don't know how many people know, HRDG gives fellowships to all the students. So she is a boss. So many dignitaries sitting in the front and uh, my colleagues from CCMB, IICT and uh, NGRI and invitees and other friends. So very good afternoon to all of you and uh, happy to be, happy to welcome you all to this uh, IICT auditorium. First of all, my congratulations to CCMB and uh, VITM for this wonderful initiative of this mobile science exhibition on genetic diseases. So this is a Gene Health Connect. Mm -hmm. Knowing about uh, genes, again, already told, uh, or when I told about this, about the genes, knowing about genes and genetic disease is very, very important for all of us. There are many diseases. Personally, I had an opportunity to work with uh, CCMB colleagues uh, on sickle cell anemia. And I'm sure there are many, um, I, it will be interesting to know about more diseases and it is always helpful for our uh, future generations as well. So this mode of mobile science popularization communication would definitely help us in bringing awareness among general public, particularly among the enthusiastic young students. So may, they may not get opportunity to visit uh, 
science museums they are mostly located in uh, big cities but this kind of museums definitely will help uh, like even rural areas and small places this uh, mobile van can reach there and we can we can go visit that place and know about more about uh, this particular I, mean, I know this is about uh, genes but sim similarly we can also create uh, other science activities as well so basically if you do this one uh, my uh, i definitely we can encourage more people to opt for science i know many people opt for professional courses like mbbs or engineering but this kind of things also can bring into more people into science so this is, we have been doing science i think that's a great future get satisfaction in doing science again little bit about uh, good afternoon ma'am welcome to this function yeah this me so i'm sure you all know about uh, csir that is a council of scientific and industrial research with network of 37 laboratories pan india it like basically it is a presence in pan india starting from jammu kashmir to trivandrum and we work we work on diverse science and technology areas so we it's basically in, in our hyderabad i can tell you we have three laboratories so one when you are going from sikandrabad to uppal first comes iict then uh, ccmb then ngri these are all csr laboratories like that we have about 37 laboratories across india so let me also tell you that we have uh, now uh, our madam dr n kalai selvi joined she heads overall all 37 laboratories so she is uh, i see many young girls students here so i am happy to tell you that we have first women dg heading this all the 37 laboratories you all can aspire to become dg so just little bit about iict iict is uh, originally started in 1944 we are in the service of almost 8 decades we most of our work is relevant to this chemistry and chemical technologies and both the basic and applied research we do and uh, the institute has state of art facilities to undertake industrial projects from concept to commercialization so we developed several technologies in particularly on generic drugs we made an impact just to give you one example i'm sure you all know about uh, aids so one of the drug we use it azt so that required for the management of aids that brought down the cost of the drug of course in in, in close uh, closely working with cipla we developed that process now that became actually affordable drug to many countries in the world that's a big contribution i can tell you from csir in particular from iict i'm sure you all know about this bharat biotech's uh, covaxin so used in limiting the spread of uh, covid there are many components present in that uh, covaxin so one of them is uh, there is adjuvant this a tlr78 uh, receptor agonist so that's that that component particularly when we are uh, going through this uh, tough pandemic times iict helped in making that uh, component and that made part of that again along with the collaboration with bharat biotech so we contributed that's again another contribution whoever took that covaxin there is some small component of iict component is there in your uh, covaxin shot so in addition to that we also working together with uh, uh, ccmb particularly this uh, zero surveillance sewage water surveillance helped it to know about this uh, extent and prevalence of the spreading patterns of covid that's we, we are working together uh, with uh, ccmb and of course other uh, laboratories across the country in coming back to this uh, topic and subject of this museum is so interesting and important i'm sure this is going to be very successful and popular in the future it is a great effort from ccmb and v vitm together let us compliment them so it's a big round of applause <laughs> so i request our staff and uh, students who are present here take the advantage and uh, opportunity to see that uh, van and visit that play, visit that uh, uh, exhibition and also spread the word ac uh, around you your families and your friends and uh, with that and wish them good luck and thank you all thank you dr sino sethi garu so one of the main a uh, motive of these kind of initiatives is to bring up on like scientific temperament and make young scientists so one of the main goals is that and next i would like to invite upon dr prakash kumar director of csir ngri and hear about their institute 
and their initiatives. Uh, uh, respective uh, DG Madam, uh, fellow directors of IICT and CCMB, uh, dignitaries of the dais, students, friends from media, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, first of all, let me uh, congratulate Dr. Binay and team CCMB for launch of a mobile exhibition, uh, Gene Health Connect. And uh, out of the five bhutas, you know, uh, the earth, air, sky, fire, and water, Angela is involved in uh, the research of uh, two aspects. One is in water, another is in the earth. So our research is mainly uh, focused on the R&D aspect of our earth exploration for hydrocarbon, minerals, and uh, groundwaters. So I am not a geneticist. But we do uh, see a number of uh, articles on different uh, magazines, also in the news. The, the very path-breaking uh, discoveries of uh, gene and DNA, RNA, etc., etc. And also, if you have a friend like uh, Binay, then you will learn more about the gene than other thing else. <laughs> and uh, but out of this, I can firmly say that the gene technology and the human health are now the synonyms. Uh, what if you had the power to prevent a genetic disorder or can you cure the genetic or infectious disease? These questions once upon a time were the, on the pages of the science fiction. But now, uh, due to the development, rapid development in genetic technology, we can say that uh, these are now the realistic possibility and uh, this thanks to the uh, genetic engineering and the scientists which have done a tremendous work in the last 70 years. So, but we know that uh, we are now facing a number of challenges in this world. Uh, the challenges around the food, around the uh, health, medicines, etc. And after listening to th my previous uh, two fellows, uh, fellow directors, I can say that I don't think these challenges can be addressed only by the conventional ways. We have to go for the genetic revolution. And also it has been put forth by the earlier speakers that the purpose of this is to become a, to foster the relation between industry and, uh, and also the uh, academia or the in institutes to make a strong Atmanirbhar Bharat uh, by providing a indigenous technologies and to reach out the masses of, of this country, to, uh, uh, to at the corner of these countries. At the end, I will not take much time, just uh, I will summarize my talk that uh, the iconic showcase by Dr. Binay and the team C CCMB uh, towards the direction of Atmanirva Bharat under a, this is a consolidated effort by, uh, by them and under the leadership of our uh, DG Madam. Uh, I, I wish them a very best of and also my support will be there from NGRI side in whatever form it is for doing the, uh, the development of our nation and also for uh, for the cause of the development of our uh, people in this country. I, I can only say that uh, my compliments and congratulations to Dr. Binay and the team CCMB. Uh, thank you very much and thank you very much to all. Thank you Dr. Prakash Kumarji. So thank you for extending your support uh, for uh, development of our country. and. Um, so, and also, uh, you have rightly said that to build Atmanirbhar Bharat, you, were, you will have to have indigenous methods rather than conventional ways. So now let us uh, 
hear a little bit about uh, CSIR Jigyasa initiatives, how it reaches out to students across India, and how they facilitated a collaboration between Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR, and National Council of Science Museum, NCSM, bringing organizations under Ministry of Science and Technology and Ministry of Culture together. I invite upon Dr. Geeta Vani Raisan, uh, head of uh, CSIR HRDG and CSIR's Jigyasa program to speak on it. Slides. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And firstly, uh, warm compliments to Director CCMB and the team uh, for really putting together this mobile science exhibition. I believe this is the first of its kind in CSIR. And I think it's a great initiative. I just had a brief look at it. Uh, it's really a fantastic initiative. So as he is uploading the slides, uh, so I just will give you a brief about this outreach program of CSIR called Jigyasa, through which uh, this science mobile exhibition has been supported. Uh, so. As uh, my uh, colleagues before me uh, talked about uh, CSIR, the 37 labs, uh, so always CSIR labs on the foundation day of CSIR or on the foundation days of the respective institutes do an open day concept wherein you know school students across the city are invited to come and visit. So that's always been going on in CSIR. But uh, with this Jigyasa initiative, which started in 2017, it has taken a more formalized approach uh, and also it is, uh, there are fixed events and all the 37 labs are performing it. So this has emerged as a major flagship program, outreach program of CSIR. It was inspired by the Honorable PM who said that, uh, who has always stressed on how science should reach to the society, uh, be it through technologies, be it through outreach programs. So the inspiration for this Jigyasa program, which started in 2017 formally, uh, came from the Honorable PM who is actually the uh, president of CSR society. Uh, so the first MOU for this Jigyasa program was done in the presence of uh, two honorable ministers of HRD and science and technology and an MOU was signed uh, with human resource development uh, and with the Kendriya Vidyalaya Sangatan. So the first uh, MOU was with the KVs, uh, sorry, uh, wherein uh, targeting the students of the Kendriya Vidyalaya. But nonetheless, it's not restricted only to Kendriya Vidyalaya. Any school children from state, government, central, anybody can uh, be a partner of this uh, program. So the idea was to inculcate scientific temper in the youth through the scientist and student interactions. And uh, of course, teacher training and many other, and there could be residential programs. So there are very wi various models which are adopted. I'm not going to the details. Uh, I'll just show you the key partnerships which have led us to the uh, moment here today and where the program has emerged as a successful program. Uh, so uh, we also signed an MOU with the Navodaya Vidyalais uh, in March 2020, just before the pandemic. And again, uh, this was one activity to further enhance the reach of the Jigyasa program. And as I said, the models are plenty and each CSIR lab adopts whatever model works best for them. And so we have exhibitions and teachers workshop, as I mentioned, and summer vacation programs. So, and they have quizzes and so on and so forth. And uh, we also entered into a, a you know, a, a expression of interest and SOI with uh, Diti Ayog, with the Atal Tinkering Labs. So there were two uh, initiatives which have really taken up. One is the CSIR incubators. As many of you are aware, uh, CCMB also has the uh, Atal um, Incubation Center, which was also a part of this MOU. And the second part was actually uh, to do innovation through the school children. And the partnership for this was, uh, we, because of this partnership, we have adopted 295 schools of Niti Aayog, uh, all the 37 CSIR labs. Each uh, lab has five schools under them. So the way they mentor them, uh, the school children who are a part of this Niti Aayog, and many activities Activities. We have many multiple webinar series with Niti Aayog and joint activities wherein we participate uh, so that our reach increases uh, further. And uh, this is a slide which on which I'll spend some time uh, because this is where we did the MOU with the NCSM, the National Council for Science Museums, in presence of the Honorable Ministers, Dr. Jitendra Singh, Minister of Science and Technology, and uh, uh, Shri Kishan DG, who is the Minister of Science. And the interesting thing about uh, science museums is uh, the first science museum which was established in uh, Kolkata, the Birla Science Museum, was actually developed by CSIR. 
and uh, and the second museum was the Vishweshwaraya Museum uh, in Bangalore again by CSIR. So you can see CSIR being one of the early organizations in the country in science and technology played a very important role even in development of science museums. Only 1970s uh, when the mandate increased and the Bombay Center was coming up, the government decided that there should be an autonomous society uh, with National Council for Science Museums which actually takes care of the science museum. So till then CSIR was responsible for the science museums and maintaining that organic linkage even today DGCSIR is a member of the governing body and the society of NCSM and um, actually in, in that capacity many CSIR directors including the previous director of IICT Dr. Chandrasekhar and I was also in, involved in governing body of NCSM. So because of that uh, relationship we thought how can we further this uh, old relationship between uh, National Council for Science Museums and CSIR. Uh, so in that context an MOU was signed, a broad MOU under which many initiatives can be taken up and one such initiative is the mobile science exhibition which you are uh, witnessing today and which is going to be launched and I believe there is also an interest for setting up a science museum in Hyderabad because we have three CSIR labs and NCSM doesn't have a museum in Hyderabad and uh, Shri Kishan Reddy ji was very keen that Hyderabad should have a science museum. That's one of the things which is going forward and I think uh, this is a great uh, again you know how science and technology ministry can work with uh, culture ministry this is an example of that and uh, so uh, another thing of uh, uh, honorable pm being a uh, chair of the csr society once mentioned your jigyasa program is doing good but what about the remote uh, you know like everybody cannot visit csir labs how about the vast india he says can you come up with a virtual kind of a thing where a student can you know use a mobile or a laptop and see what the scientist is doing can he actually uh, get a feeling of what so based on that we developed this jigyasa virtual lab and this was also during the pandemic it was kind of a blessing in disguise for us. So we collaborated with IIT Bombay uh, for developing this virtual laboratory and uh, this is available and I request all the students who are in this auditorium to please go to this website and, and all that is uh, there are multiple concepts, there are videos, there are animations and, and many times we talk of Indian scientists not being showcased and you have uh, Dr. Manjula Reddy I think who is in the auditorium. So there are comics and you know a very easy way of taking the science to the people. So there are multiple activities and simulations and this is antimicrobial resistance, a game called called Armour, which was developed by CSIRM Tech. So there are many fun activities for the students to engage in science. Uh, and uh, recently we launched the Jigyasa mobile app. Again, Dr. Uh, Jitendra Singh ji uh, launched this app just uh, in April. And uh, another unique activity under Jigyasa, again, this is shows you what are all the various initiatives. Uh, it was recently launched as an astro lab. There's a young enthusiast who's setting up astronomy labs in schools. And he and uh, CSIRM Tech partnered together. And what is unique about this is it has a sign language enabled videos and comics. So why when we talk of you know sustainable development goals and inclusivity, we are leaving out the disabled children, the Vyanjan children. So this is the Vyanjan enabled astro lab. So the students who can who are deaf and uh, you know dumb can also get access to the science. So this is a unique initiative which was again this is in Karnal uh, where the uh, place of birth of Kalpana Chavla who was the astronaut from India. And uh, apart from this, there are multiple milestones. I won't bore you with the details. Uh, during the Azadi Kamrat Mahotsa, we did a national competition called Jigyasa Vigyan Mahotsa uh, through the mobile app. We also signed partnership with Bulan Shahar in presence of Shri Yogi Adityanath Ji, where the idea is uh, to, that Bulan Shahar has been very active in promoting this astronomy labs. So Jigyasa is a partner in that. And uh, recently with Royal Society of Chemistry, uh, with Dr. Kalai Selvi, we did a, a battery coin experiment. So there are many such initiatives and uh, so just to summarize more than 4 lakh students across India have benefited from this program uh, through all our 37 CSIR labs and we are thankful to the multiple stakeholders without whom we could not have done this and also uh, and most importantly we are also working with many state governments and I am very happy that in Telangana thanks to CCMB a lot of act activity is going on and we need many more and we are also getting into vernacular languages because India is a diverse country and we need to reach out and uh, um, again congratulations to the CCMB team and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Dr. Geeta Vani, ma'am, for all your support for the Jigyasa initiatives. And this collaboration between CSIR and NCSM has been truly exceptional to promote scientific temper amongst public and also general students. Now let us hear a little bit about the process of making this exhibition 
and uh, India has developed many mobile exhibitions which are aligned with content in science textbooks but not as many as that are going to educational institutions and are talking of content outside the usual textbooks. Now let us hear from Srimati K. Sadhana. Um, she is a director of VITM on how their team went about building this exhibition. Genetics is not just a subject of research. It has become yeah. Genetics is not just a subject of research. It has become part of a culture. This is a quote by James D. Watson, one of the scientists who discovered DNA in 1953, which is very true. Good afternoon to dignitaries on the dais, off the dais, students, teachers, and also uh, uh, DGCSER who has joined online. National Council of Science Museums is the largest network of science museums in the country, and Vishwasha Industrial and Technological Museum Bangalore is the southern headquarters of National Council of Science Museums. Actually, when the museum was inaugurated, on 27 July 1965, it was under the administrative control of CSIR. So for 13 years, we were under CSIR. And on April 4, 1978, when National Council of Science Museums formed, was formed, we were part of NCSM. Now, after a gap of 45 years, we are again, we have joined hands with CSIR uh, for developing this new exhibition, Gene Health Connect. We are happy to be collaborating with CSIR after a gap of 45 years. And coming to Visheshwara Museum, as I told, it's a southern headquarters. We have got science museums, uh, two regional science centers, one in the state of Andhra in Tirupati and one in the state of Kerala in Calicut. And we have two district science centers, one in Gulbarga and one in uh, Tirnal Valley. I hope most of you must have visited Vishesha Industrial and Technological Museum. I, I hope, can anyone put up your hands who have not, who visited the museum in Bangalore? Yeah, yeah, that's good. It's good to know that at least quite a few are, uh, have visited the museum in uh, Bangalore. If you have not visited, please visit. And also you can visit any of the science centers which are uh, part of the NCSM network. And also we have set up science centers and handed over to the state government. In Southern Zone, we have set up four science centers, one in uh, um, Darwad in Karnataka, and the other one is Pelikula in Mangalore, in, again in Karnataka, and one in Coimbatore in Tamil Nadu and one more in Puducherry. And we are, go we are going to set up, we are in the process of setting up uh, the final stages of inaugurating a new science center in Andhra Pradesh in Rajamundri. So this, so this is about the network of uh, science museums in India. And generally the, uh, the main job of Visheshwara Museum is taking science to the people from the labs. It's all in textbooks, but how will you take it to the common man in, the, in a way easily which, which can be understood by the students? So we have different exhibition halls. Actually, we, we, we generally we do technological exhibitions, uh, engineering exhibitions. But the, for the first time, we did a gallery on biotechnology in the year 2000. So that was a new way. And again, it was renovated in 2021 completely. So when CSIR approached us that uh, whether we can uh, do an exhibition on uh, uh, genetics and genetic diseases, we were more than happy to do it because we already we have worked on a uh, gallery on biotechnology, so we had some knowledge on how to develop exhibits in this field, so we were more than happy to join hands with the uh, C, uh, CCMB uh, the, the director Hyderabad and their team and, and that's how the MOU was signed between NCSM and CSIR and then again we had uh, one more MOU between VITM, Vishesha Museum and CCMB be uh, Hyderabad. And also we already have a, a, a fleet of mobile buses which runs across the country. Each museum in southern zone we have got 10 uh, mobile science exhibition buses and we have uh, mobile science exhibitions on various themes which goes into the interiors, interior villages of that respective states. And this, this bus which we are, uh, we are having, Gene Health Connect, it, the mobile science bus belongs to, our, uh, to the regional science center in Andhra Pradesh. We thought we could use that bus because we will not have much problem with the permit. It, because this bus is going to travel in the state of Telangana and Andhra. So we have used uh, that bus and it is, we, are, we have developed this exhibition. 
and coming to hands on exhibits i would say that uh, in this exhibition you can see that uh, we are starting with the uh, uh, hereditary how you resemble your parents we say that you resemble your father we resemble your mother the child resembles so here you can there are there is an exhibit in which there are two discs are there you can select there are four uh, set of uh, parents are there you can select the parent then you can fi find out the child you can by rotating the disc you, uh, yourself you'll be you'll be able to do it without any reading or anything you'll be able to match yourself but see seeing at the characteristics so it that simple way and you can press a check button whether you it's right or wrong and also you we, you can we have, we have all, we have also the director ccmb talked about sickle cell anemia and the, the no, no, that there's an interactive model even you can see the color of the uh, the thing also is uh, pale for the sickle cell anemia the blood is slightly pale color and also how the uh, blood cells they get uh, clogged they will not be able to pass through for the normal it it can be it can pass through and th today is world thalassemia day you can see in that mobile there's one exhibit on to Uh, show uh, the patient who is normal patient how is the uh, hemoglobin and the thalassemia infected patient how is the hemoglobin and not only that we have also covered uh, real life stories of people uh, having genetic diseases just as we inherit uh, property and wealth from our parents we also inherit diseases from our parents so there's a model by which we show how uh, we inherit different diseases from our parents and also we we have um, we, we also show that it's better to have genetic diversity that is uh, there's a two families are there you can select a male or female from if you select both the male and female from the same, same family the chances of having genetic diseases is, disorders is more if you select uh, a person from a family tree a and one the the female from the family tree b the chances of having genetic disease is less so these are all we have made this exhibits in hands on way which you will never forget that is if you read the book you will it, uh, it is only textbook the speciality of uh, our museum is we are we are able to make hands on exhibits and you can uh, you can you can go around and see this ex exhibition there are it has got 20 interactive exhibits uh to a 10 are outside five on each side of the bus and uh, 10 exhibits are inside the bus five on each side of the bus and this bus will be traveling across the states of uh, andhra and telangana uh to create awareness because we thought that now it is time for us to create awareness on uh genetic disorders so that there are many problems which are uh cost due to genetic disorders can be avoided because there is science there is technology available for detecting and uh, treating and curing it and for preventing it uh and i i would like to thank the entire team of uh, csir uh, ccmb and the team from ncsm who who have cooperated with us in making this exhibition Uh, a grand success but i would like I, i would not like to take names but i think i have to take two names i think especially dr somdatta from uh, ccmb and jyoti mehra from vitm both of them have done a wonderful job uh, a big thank you to both of them and uh, uh, hope hope that you will visit all the uh, all the exhibits of this museum and also you are warm you are always a welcome you are welcome to visit vishesh museum in bangalore whenever you visit thank you thank you uh, shrimati sadhana ma'am um so it has been uh, wonderful to actually see uh, being this uh, mobile science exhibition being fruitful um, by collaboration with uh, ncsm and ccmb um so i i'm sure all of you students will be excited to see this right after um this meeting so i I'm, i'm now privileged to invite upon our guest of honor Dr N Kalai Selvi Director General of Council of Scientific and Industrial Research CSIR joining us from New Delhi um she is an expert in battery technologies especially lithium batteries she has been the former director of CSIR Central Electrochemical Research Institute Karikudi and now the director general CSIR since August 2022 madam i would like you to comment on the gene uh, health connect initiative over to you ma'am So, madam, you are on mute. Yeah. Yes. 
we still can't hear you or uh, you're still on mute yes is it mute yes now we can hear yeah am i audible please tell me one more time yes yes yes, yes ma'am fine yeah. <laughs> okay okay thank you so namaskar vanakkam and good afternoon to every one of you i'm very happy thrilled excited and happier than anyone who is sitting there in that auditorium why because initially i was also dreaming and planning that i will also be joining there physically but uh, being a uh, director general you know uh, the travel the time the meeting plans everything is susceptible to get changed and therefore i am not fortunate enough to join there physically but then uh, i am really happy to share my thoughts through this kind of a connect that is virtual connect friends today is a very very important day and i should place on record my appreciations and my congratulations uh, to the entire csr family with a special reference to director ccmb the jigyasa head dr geetavani raisam and also i should really congratulate and appreciate the efforts that we received from uh, nscm because they are really coming with a kind of load of energy and when the madam was talking the earlier speaker she was fondly recalling that this is a kind of a reunion after 45 years madam more than you we are also feeling so much excited to join hands with you and to you and friends today is a very very important day that is 8th of may is the world thalassemia day meaning is and this year the team is given us be aware care and share meaning is first you make yourself aware of what is this thalassemia or what is the kind of a disease it is and how it should be understood how best it could be really planned to be mitigated and to what extent science and technology could be exploited for this purpose do we have any scientists in india who can really help you out and if at all some scientists are there where are they coming from and where are they available and what are the ways and means by means of which you can really have access to those kind of scientists so these are the very very important points of awareness that all of you should really make it especially on today and this is where the event of today that is gh connect gene health connect which is getting established through this mobile science exhibition is gaining its paramount importance i would say so for the uh, uh, i would say the two alphabets gh means either we will think about uh, a guest house or a government hospital but today they are coming up with a kind of a new name it is gene health connect because once we were thinking that health means it could be really having it could be monitored and it could be really controlled in a big way by way of nutritional values and somebody will say that by way of having good lifestyle practices you can really ensure good health and if you just ask somebody from like a, a, a physical <coughs> physical actress and all then they will say a kind of a exercise physical exercise is needed to maintain a good health but now we are coming up with a kind of a new definition that by way of doing gene editing by way of really understanding the functions of gene and how genes are functioning how best they could be edited how could they be arranged and sequenced by means of which even if we have some inherent problems due to birth that could also be really addressed in a major way i think this is where one can appreciate the depth of science and today we are here to get more and more understanding that what are the best ways by means of which one can really have better control over this inherent diseases friends a country like india where it is already rich with population even after this kind of the richest population even today when a child is born two things are very important the first exciting question is whether the child newborn is a male or a female that is the first curiosity and the second curiosity is whether he or she is resembling father the more or mother the more 
so there in the within the family if at all the child is resembling the father then mother will be waiting for an opportunity and after uh, maybe one or two months or one or two years she will say even though appearance wise he is resembling his father all his activities all his qualities all his talents all his capabilities he is resembling only me as his mother so like that this father and mother always there will be a healthy competition within the family just to celebrate the child in terms of he resembles me the more he resembles me the most like that so that is the kind of a bond that a family is always celebrating at the same time when the child is growing and growing and when we become older after 40 plus we really be doing it the other way we will say oh my father was having sugar and therefore i am also prone to become a diabetic person oh my mother was having this kind of a disease and therefore i will also prone to get this kind of a disease so these days it is becoming very very common that father and mother they are not leaving back the children the kind of education that they gave for the child they are not leaving back only the properties and assets that they earned earned for the children but also unknowingly they are leaving back some kind of diseases or i would say some kind of possibilities also prone to get kind of a xy disease also therefore instead of putting the blame on parents can we really do through science and technology can we play around the genes by means of which always parents should be celebrated and this is where i think this gene health connect will help you in a big way and now we are in living in a totally different kind of a lifestyle era wherein because once upon a time people used to go to other places they go and visit museums they go and visit district science centers but nowadays if at all anything is coming just at your doorstep if something is available in the form of a mobile unit i think that is where the access is becoming more and more i think this is where csir and this ncsm both of us we are working together and we are trying to make science we are trying to bring science in the most accessible way by means of which even school children and also college students and also the responsible citizens of the country all of us will have more access more understanding more awareness by means of which we will be able to take care of ourselves and we can share the message to the ones those who are getting so much of care from our end i think it is very very important that we as scientists instead of understanding science within the laboratory instead of discussing science within the laboratory instead of publishing it in national and international journals the great success of a scientist and the scientific invention is that to what extent we are able to touch upon the lives of the society and to what extent we are able to educate the society especially by educating the children because children today you are the younger generation but you are the future of this nation today india is a developing country to see india as a developed country i think the contribution should be more from youngsters and therefore it is worthwhile and it becomes mandate that science and our research and innovations should be shared with children school children and college students by means of which we are equipping the society we are augmenting your capabilities we are making you eligible and we are qualifying the younger generation to lead the country in the coming days through science and technology the honorable prime minister of the country who is the president of csir society he always puts a question directly on to each and every one of us he asks us uh, directly you as scientists to what extent you stay connected with the school children this is a question he poses almost every year when we happen to meet him during our society meeting 
and every time it is the jigyasa platform that really gives us a face saving mode a face saving model and that is the real activated implemented model that helps us in a big way and we make the prime minister also to understand that we the scientists we also these days realize that apart from doing science by ourselves we have to educate it and we have to pass it on to the next generation the science the innovation the understanding and also your preparedness for science as your future studies and your educational goals i think jigyasa platform it deserves a great appreciation especially on this day because you are making science as simple as possible you are taking the essence of science and today also in this mobile exhibition i have been told that 20 exhibits are there and to make this 20 exhibits i can really understand the kind of work hard work and the time spent by scientists from csar and from ncsm i think this is the golden opportunity and you as school children and college students you should visit this mobile exhibition you should try to understand and also you should understand what is the meaning of genetic disorder what is the meaning of gene editing how best this could be utilized to mitigate the problems or you can really help the society in a bigger way and in one of the recent meetings with the honorable prime minister he posed the most important question he asked to what extent csar is prepared to mitigate the next generation or future pandemics also like the way dr shrivas reddy was explaining even though csar is coming up with a kind of a drug development series of drug development we used to say the country's memory is cdra is memory plus so every time we will be going on correlating csar with one or the other important drug dr shrivas reddy was just making a mention about uh, our contribution towards aids and also our contribution towards covid times so whether it is bharat biotech or cipla the contribution from csar side is really remarkable and when he said that those who have taken covaxin as the injection a part of iict is there meaning is we are already playing a very very important role in each and every citizen in their life either directly or indirectly and therefore this is yet another opportunity wherein csar especially ccmb under the dynamic leadership of dr vinay nandikuri and also jigyasa platform they are now coming up in a big way that this awareness should be given to school children and the entire society and i'm sure this attempt of mobile lab mobile science exhibition this will help the entire society in a bigger way and uh, as a head of csar family i i'm really feeling so happy and proud the kind of contributions that are made and i really congratulate once again both this my csar family as well as ncsm also like the way they were talking about uh, the kolkata and the bangalore museum now one more museum is also planned in hyderabad but before that comes into existence i think this particular mobile exhibition this will give you in which science can contribute in the current days as well as in the upcoming days also therefore friends and my young friends especially please make use of the opportunity visit this mobile exhibition talk to your friends you should share your happiness along with your friends and you should share your feedback also with csir so that if at all we are, we can do something better in the coming days we would love to do so also and therefore after your visit please feel free to share feedback that will help us in a big way to plan further so with this few words once again i wish to congratulate the entire csar family especially hyderabad labs all the three labs because when ngra director came and he talked about panjatatwa i thought that oh he is going to give a philosophical talk 
topic then finally he said that no we are uh, touching upon two things that is earth and water so friends we are there because uh, one lab is working on that kind of a thing ccmb is working on microbiology related things drug development and they are coming up in a big way with very many unique unique facilities of this country and of course iict can we call them as chemical technology persons or drug development person because iict is known for its multifaceted uh, arrangements and i could see the former iict person who is the current director of immt also there so i think that is the beauty of csir wherever they are they will come back if at all something is happening at iict it cannot happen without ramanish narayan and i can understand so i appreciate the kind of a feeling Uh, so i i think the common uh, umbilical cord relationship is all of us are having one gene which is csir gene i think that csir gene is really making all of us to feel that we are one family i think this gene need not be edited it is very strong it has no disorders it has perfect sequence it is perfectly all right and it is fully matured and i think if at all in the whole world if at all someone wants to just to showcase one gene which is perfect from end to end i think csir gene could be pictureized so with this kind of a good note i take this opportunity congratulate everyone and i should really thank the organizers for having given this opportunity of inaugurating this mobile science exhibition especially on this 8th may which is the world thalassemia day thank you so very much I wish this attempt every success and requesting all the participants to enjoy this exhibition and share your feedback also. Thank you so very much. Namaskar. Thank you director general ma'am for your inspiring speech. Um so as uh, director uh, director general ma'am was saying uh, to make this country developed from developing you all youngsters play a major role in it and uh, so thanks to jigyasa initiatives jigyasa platform and csir and we should probably give a, a huge round of applause for jigyasa initiatives again <laughs> and yes ma'am csir gene is 100% perfect <laughs> so yes <laughs> that's great yes um so and also i would like to thank uh, director general ma'am for coining the term gh which is not general hospital or guest house but a gene health so thank you ma'am for that and uh, so now it's a time for the inauguration of the exhibition i request dr kalai selvi dr uh, director general ma'am to share her screen with the online inauguration link and click on the link Yeah I'm extremely happy to launch this uh, GH Connect that is Gene Health Connect Mobile Science Exhibition yes all the very best um there is going to be a video now or which is going to be played please uh, yeah watch it sure sure exhibition is a joint initiative of Vishveshwaraya Industrial and Technological Biology Hyderabad functioning under Council of Scientific and Industrial Research Ministry of Science and Technology Government of India The exhibition is a result of a collaborative research on subject and presentation techniques that are best suited for public engagement of science Why are we all similar but not the same? Every person is unique. 
part of what makes you unique is again your genes they control how you look and how your body works since everyone has slightly different genes everyone has a different set of instructions the exhibition begins showing you why you're unique and so is your health about my genes a person has two copies of each gene one from the mother and one from the father genes carry instructions that tell your cells how to work and grow interact with this exhibition and you can see all these concepts presented through interactive models cause problems most of the times the genes we get from our parents work the same way as they do in them but sometimes a gene can get changed due to copying errors exposure to mutagens or a viral infection this change in gene form is called mutation in this section know about the gene mutations and how they can cause either innocuous traits like lactose tolerance or problematic diseases like hemophilia beta thalassemia or sickle cell anemia what to do with genetic disorders understanding is essential the point however is to either avert problems or to cure it so in this exhibition you come to know about the different types of preconception care preconception interventions and postnatal or after birth tests to diagnose diseases so that you can take informed decisions whenever it is called for whether you're a student healthcare professional caregiver or someone interested in genetics this exhibition promises to be informative and enlightening experience for all who care for a healthy future So that brings us to the end of the inauguration event. Um, so a round of heartfelt thanks to many people who have made this exhibition possible. Starting with Team CSIR under the leadership of Dr. Kalai Selvi, Director General CSIR for supporting the Jigyasa Initiative, generously and constantly challenging us to do better to reach out to young people of India. Team Jigyasa under the leadership of Dr. Geeta Vani Raisam, who has always supported us in trying out new formats of scientific communication. Team VITM, under the leadership of Srimati K. Sadhana for being an absolutely capable team of people to make our exhibition informative, engaging and playful. A special thanks to Mrs. Jyoti Mehra, a curator at VITM for conceptualizing and executing the exhibition, CSAR IACT, CSAR NGRI for supporting us in our Jigyasa initiatives. And also the Telangana Social Welfare Educational Research Institutions, Society and other educational institutions for partnering with us in taking the exhibition across the state. Finally, to our amazing people of CCMB under the leadership of Dr. Vinay Nandikuri, uh, this exhibition has been an effort of uh, many students and scientists who have dedicated to the cause of education on genes and genetics. Our research facilities has always been willing to participate in science communications, IT, um, instrumentation section, engineering section, transport, guest house, canteen, public relations office, LTS, security and director's office and uh, CCMB administration as well for their wholehearted support and uh, for making this event successful. And I would like to give you give a huge round of applause to everyone, please. Yeah. Thank you.
and uh, I would request everyone to stand for a minute for a national anthem. I just apologize, there is some technical glitch. Wilson? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Anamanadinayakajay <laughs> Tabha Shubha Name Dhyaye Tabha Shubha Shisha Maage Gaye Tabha Jaya Gada Jana Gana Mangala Gayata Jaya He Bharata Bhagya Vidata Jaya He Jaya He Jaya He Jaya 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 He Jai Hind. And we'll all disperse to the CCMB campus for mobile science exhibition. And thank you, Director General, uh, Dr. Kalei Selviji. Yeah, thank you.